Frank is the managing director of Blue SG. Blue SG, I believe, is not unfamiliar to us. Blue SG made its news, right, some time mm -hmm. ago, and then uh, their plan is to hit a thousand electronic cars and also two thousand charging points across the entire island. Now, Blue SG is very innovative. They have also, um, you know, got into a lot of collaboration with research institutes on electro mobility as well as energy storage and they are working everything on lithium metal polymer and battery developed by themselves so this is a very forward-looking organization frank is the president of car sharing association of singapore we really need car sharing in singapore looking at the prices of the car and um and so i think without further ado over to you frank frank are you ready can you share your screen i was muted sorry ah. so i shall be able to share my screen uh, yes over please. to you nice is that okay very good thumbs up guys screen. so that frank knows <laughs> okay very good. So uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Eileen, for for hosting me. That's going to be a, a very interesting uh, topic for today, of course. Uh, so let me yes. So let me start, and uh, maybe I, I start with a few words about uh, myself and Blue SG. Uh, I moved to Singapore uh, in late 2000, so it's, it's been quite a long time. I'm in Singapore, and I moved there to work for for French MNC, as you could probably hear from my accent. Uh, this French MNC is the Bolloré Group. The name is probably unknown to you, but we are one of the 500 largest companies in the world. Currently, we have uh, 80,000 employees worldwide, and uh, only in Singapore, we have about 2,000. So we have, I mean, this slide is very busy, uh, but uh, to make it simple, we have three main verticals. The first one is the transport and logistic, and uh, that's the biggest one. They are doing freight forwarding, uh, and they are also uh, building and managing ports and railways. The second vertical is communication and media. And we have a majority stake in Havas, Vivendi, which is one of the top communication companies in the world, and Universal Music. So. I would say why you are, you may not be familiar with the name of Bolloré. Uh, you may be more interested in the fact that, well, uh, Beyonce, Shakira, or you two are our employees since they have contract with us. Well, of course, that's a joke. Don't, don't say that. Uh, they, they are not exactly our employees, but that's the joke we like to make. Um, and the last vertical is the one I belong to, and it gather, gathers the technology entities of the group under the name of Blue System. In April 2017, we incepted Blue SG and launched a full electric car sharing service in December the same year. So you may be familiar with it. And uh, by the way, I hope that many of you are already a member. The service is working very well. It's becoming more and more popular. And since the COVID crisis and in particular with the circuit breaker, of course, there was an impact on the activity, but actually very reasonably, and in particular compared to the, to the other modes of transport. For the last two weeks, we already see the rentals which are back to normal with, the level, with levels of rentals which are similar to the pre-circuit breaker times. Uh, that probably shows that Singaporeans consider Blue SG as a safe transport option. So Blue AG is a startup, even though we are backed by a very big MNC. We had two employees three years ago, and we are about 92 days. The growth has been quite fast, and by the way, we are still recruiting. So what is interesting is that we have, uh, in Blue AG, we actually have been in crisis mode since we started. It's not an activity crisis, fortunately but it's more in terms of organization. Indeed, things move very fast. We are facing multiple challenges every day, though positive ones. And we never know what, what the next day will be like. 
And we need to adapt continuously. We need to adapt our processes, our workforce, our strategy, and our organization. So if I want to make the transition to the subject of this conference, I would say that there is probably not much difference between how we select our candidates currently in Blue SG and the profiles which will be searched by recruiters during and after the COVID crisis. And talking about adaptation, one of my favorite quotes is from Charles Darwin, who can be considered, as you know, as the father of the theory of evolution through natural selection. It says, it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. Uh, a relevant analogy is about the Japanese, Japanese uh, seismic architecture. When there is a strong magnitude earthquake, a rigid building will collapse. The Japanese architects design swaying towers which stay up. So if you are not flexible, you may collapse. This crisis is, uh, is uh, obviously unprecedented. For those who haven't lived the war, this is probably the worst we have ever known. We never lived in times where a large part of the commercial activity was shut down, where people were forced to stay at home for months, with millions of jobs lost all over the world, and where your future is unknown. And how fast things will get better is uncertain. There has been many crises in, in, in here. Sorry, there has been many crises in history, more or less severe, but they were always had an impact, and most of the times, unemployment. The COVID-19 is not the first one yet. It is probably the most difficult period in recent history. So, what happens now? when you are looking for a job. Will companies continue to recruit? What will be the profiles search? How will the recruitment process go? And if you want to survive and succeed, it is all about how you shall adapt to the situation as Charles Darwin said. Let's be honest. The current period is certainly not the best one to find your dream job. First, companies are retrenching. And for one given, given job, there are now more candidates. Second, crisis creates uncertainty. And during uncertainties, employers review their development plan and they will wait for the situation to settle before they can budget their development and adapt accordingly their recruitment strategies. Third, People who are currently employed are going to be more reluctant to change, and therefore there will be less vacancies. So now, now that I say that, you shall be pretty depressed and wonder why I'm coming in front of you today and bring your moral down. Well, the first important thing I believe when you have a challenge is to face the situation honestly and understand the consequences. It is a necessary first step to determine your reaction and what shall be your next move. But anyway, you probably all know the Chinese meaning of crisis. It is danger and opportunity. The danger is pretty well known. So what will be the opportunities and how can you take them? Because there are opportunities, that is certain. First, some industries are still growing and their recruitment plans haven't changed, or they may even have increased, actually. That's true for e-commerce, supply chain, there are many IT companies, manufacturing, and of course, healthcare. Second, some functions are more in demand today. For example, in the current situation, legal, HR departments, 
they are very busy. Finance as well, and depending on the industry, other departments didn't see a change in their workload. Third, companies also have to adapt to the change of environment, and therefore they will have to adapt consequently their workforce in terms of uh, organization and functions, but also they, they, they may be looking for candidates with different skill sets and able to perform in a situation which could be very different. Let me share my personal experience first. I graduated from the Sorbonne University in Paris. I met my wife-to-be on the benches of the lecture hall and we graduated together in 1991. We were both OK students, but what differentiated us is that I was probably a higher profile than her. So please do not repeat uh, what I say to her as I, I will have a difficult time at home. Uh, but indeed, uh, I was in parallel of my studies carrying uh, various activities. I was president of the Students Association of the Uni. I was managing a company which was doing market studies and which was doing very well. But after being graduated, my wife started to look for a job and she was not doing it very enthusiastically because she was hesitating to take a sabbatical year. So anyway, econo the economy was booming and why not giving a try and see what is available. So she sent two job applications. She received three offers, very nice ones actually. She then joined the company as a, as a marketing manager with a quite high salary. But on my side, I first had to go for my military service. And I joined the Navy for 18 months as an officer. Shortly after I enrolled, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait and the first Gulf War started. When I finished my military duty, the economy was in crisis. Hundreds of thousands of jobs were lost. Recruitment was very limited. So despite my good profile, I had a lot of difficulties to find a position which was fitting my aspirations. And I had to adapt quickly to the situation uh, as I would not stand staying jobless for two months. I first took a temporary job as an external auditor. And four months later, I then found a permanent one as a sales executive for a company distributing fax machines. It was a, a Xerox type of company, very high pressure, limited use of the knowledge I had acquired during the five years of my studies. Definitely, that was not my dream job. Anyway, I found I learned a lot during this experience. First, on the professional aspect. Second, and more importantly, about myself, and what is the attitude needed to overcome challenges. This lesson helped me throughout my career. And many years later, finally, I think I, I didn't do too bad. So what is the takeaway from this personal, personal experience? First, even in times of crisis, there are opportunities. But times have changed and the people who will do well will be the ones who are prepared to change. Second, the job you, you are taking now, you, you may take now, that will not define your entire career. Don't be too rigid about your, your immediate expectations. Times will get better, and showing that you have been able to adapt and strive during a crisis this will be a recognized achievement for your next career move. Third, there are always good things to learn in a job. And the most important, important one is what you will discover about yourself and your ability to strive. That will give you a lot of self-confidence for your future and that will definitely be key to your success. Put yourself in the recruiter's shoes. What is different now from six months ago? Before, the recruiter will probably have a good idea of the profile needed for performing a job in the next two to three years. 
And as for the longer term, he or she will have an idea of what could be your potential career path for the company's anticipated development. But when the COVID crisis broke out, anticipating what will happen the week after was already a challenge. Things may, may be a bit clearer now, but saying that the, the next, what the next six months will be like, I would say it's a risky bet. So what will the recruiter look for when selecting a candidate? Your ability to, uh, to be adaptable is going to be important. If I select this candidate for this role now, will he or she be able to adapt to a change of context? Will he or she have the skills for a different role? But also, will he or she be willing to change? When you are interviewed, and if the, even after you are hired actually, and when you are asked if you are okay to do things outside from your job scope or from your comfort zone, be careful of what you answer. If you say that your ambition is to have a well-defined career path, that you plan to carry on your duties in what you know best, blah, blah, well, that may show that while you may be a relevant choice for the immediate need, you may become irrelevant in the midterm if the company's plans take a different turn. So in other words, anything which could hint uh, not my job attitude could quickly be a deal breaker as it will show that you are not fit for the future. Also, you shall show that you are able to strive in a challenging environment and react to an unforeseen context. Candidates who demonstrate that they are motivated when things get hectic will certainly stand a better chance than the ones who like to have a settled work when things are well planned and duties remain stable all year, all year long. Another thing that the COVID crisis has changed drastically in companies is the work from home organization. Uh, currently, it is a general rule in most of the companies. Anyway, it's required by law, so it is enforced, no choice. But it is likely that once things get back to normal, and even when offices will be busier, work from home will be much more adopted than what it was previously. Obviously, the technology is now very helpful and there are many options to be productive outside of the office. But Zoom, Teams, Skype for video conference, and I'm not even talking about WhatsApp phone calls or emails, they do not allow the same level of quality of communication within the team. And being isolated at home, your level of interaction with your colleagues or your managers will necessarily be lower. So for your recruiting manager, you will need to show that you are able to work autonomously. And beyond working autonomously, that you can take ownership of the job or of the project which is assigned to you. What does it mean practically? It means that when you are facing difficulties, you are willing to find solutions on your own without having to always ask your colleagues or your managers for help. It also means that if for performing the tasks that you are responsible for, you have dependencies from others, you shall be able to follow up on your own, contact directly your colleagues, chasing them, and if necessary, uh, make sure that things get done anyway. Uh, micromanagement is never good, but in a work from home organization, it's just becoming impossible anyway. So don't be someone who needs to be managed closely. Also, again, uh, not being in, at the office necessarily decreases the frequency and the quality of communication with your workmates. For, for a recruiter, 
it would be interesting to find profiles who are naturally good communicators. If you are already reluctant to discuss with your colleagues in a normal office environment, well, chances that you will have no interaction with them when uh, working from home will be even greater. Uh, I mean, you will have probably less interaction with them. On the contrary, if you are someone who is uh, always keen to discuss with your peers, you will probably be okay to initiate video calls frequently and maintain a good communication in the company. And without internal communication, a company just cannot work. So your ability to communicate will become a differentiating factor and probably an even more important skill for the recruiter. With the development of video conference and the limitation to meet face-to-face, -face, you, um, you also now have video interviews. So what does it change for the recruiter and how shall you adapt? First, let's have a look at what will be the criteria for a recruiter to select can a candidate. Your knowledge, it is mostly what you have acquired during your studies or through trainings. Your skills, they are what you develop during previous jobs or internships and how you were able to put into professional practice what you learned during your studies and the competencies that you developed. And finally, the attitude. And that's definitely the most important. Why is attitude so important? People who have your knowledge, they are plenty. Same will go for skills unless you develop unique ones through multiple experiences and probably a long career. And anyway, if you do not have the skills, you will acquire them quickly when you work for us. We are going to train you for that purpose. But a company is not able to train you on your character. And your character is what makes you unique. The difference between an average employee and an excellent one, it's all about the attitude. During a crisis, as explained before, employers will look for candidates who have the ability to strive during difficult times, who can communicate, who can take ownership and are autonomous. So this is what will make the difference when a recruiter we need to choose between two candidates who have more or less the same knowledge and the same skills. Anyway, the reality is that there is no need for an interview to assess your knowledge and, and your skills. They are mostly listed in your resume through your past training programs and professional experiences. The main focus of the interviewer will be to understand your attitude. Right. And as a matter of fact, to ask me something. this is Thank usually you. the hidden part of you. At least this is the one which is not written on your CV. It is already extremely challenging to assess the character of a candidate during a one hour face to face interview. You have to figure out how the person will react in a given situation whether he or she will go along well with the colleagues, whether he or she will adhere to the company's culture. And when you have to select an applicant through a video call, the, difficulties, the difficulty gets even greater. The conversation gets uh, more formal, less natural with fewer interactions and spontaneity. You cannot read the body language and your recruiter needs to feel comfortable with you anyway. So my advice is even more today than uh, before the crisis, is be natural, natural, natural. <laughs> Do not hesitate to make a personal remark, to laugh, 
to, to show the true person that you are. You know, uh, recruiters are experienced. They have interviewed dozens of candidates like you. They are able to assess your sincerity during the discussion and, and they may have tricks. I tell you a secret, I have tricks. So any uh, pre-formatted answer, it will be spotted immediately and that will let your interviewer in the blue about your personality. In the current period, that's not recommended. Two months ago, we were recruiting a HR manager. There's nothing more of a people job than HR, uh, where you need to understand the personality of the candidates. And due to the circuit breaker measures, I had to run the interview through video calls. So I had, uh, I mean, three candidates were, were presented to me, uh, shortlisted. And the first one gave me very formatted answer. You know, the, the kind that a candidate must answer to a particular question, uh, always positive, nothing controversial. I felt I was reading a book about the do's and don'ts when being interviewed. So I was bored and I did not trust the sincerity of the candidate. The second one was actually thoughtful. Uh, she had a great with an experience, uh, but she was very serious and super careful about her answers. And the last one was relaxed. She was spontaneous, she was laughing. She was saying openly what her weaknesses were. I mean, guess what? She was the one to get a job. So recruitment is a competitive process. You will never be better than when you are showing the, your, your true personality. You cannot be as good when you are pretending to be someone else. Your unique character is what is going to make you being selected. And it includes, among other things, your strength and your weaknesses. Don't be afraid to say that you are not good at certain things. Anyway, nobody will believe that you are perfect. And failure is necessary to improve. When a recruiter asks you what your weaknesses are or where you fell in the past, the focus is not to know what you are not good at, actually is to, uh, is to uh, understand how much you can assess yourself and how do you learn and progress. One of the most, meaning, uh, the most meaningful professional quotes, in my opinion, is from one of the greatest leaders in history, Nelson Mandela. He said he never lost. He either won or learned. Hopefully, that shall make you more relaxed during your interview and that shall guide you throughout your career. There's nothing to lose in a failure as long as you learn from it and progress. At Blue AG, we certainly prefer employees who try and sometimes fail than people who take no initiatives, fearing that it may not turn well. So that's what I wanted to share with you uh, today. To summarize, I say be optimistic. There are opportunities today, but you may have to adapt your expectations. The COVID crisis is actually an opportunity. The best ones will get through even stronger because they will have demonstrated that they can strive during difficult times and they will have learned a lot about themselves okay. facing challenges. And that's going to make you stronger for the rest of your life. Adaptability and versatility will be more important criteria when selecting candidates. You need to be prepared uh, to uh, react in a, to a change of situation. Right. And also working from home, becoming a more general practice you will have to show that you can be responsible, that you can take ownership, that you can be autonomous. And uh, my last advice is when you, are, when you have vi uh, video interviews, be as natural as possible, so to make the recruiter comfortable. That's it. Uh, and I, uh, 
attach here and I'll show you the links if you want to apply to Blue AG because again, we continue hiring. Thank you. That is so important, you know. I think, uh, Frank, your last slide is the one everybody's going to take a picture <laughs> of the screen. Yeah, I think the very quick question here, I, I know I kind of break my own rule. Uh, you do have positions, right, that, uh, that you are hiring and you're looking for people. Yeah? Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you.